Hello Internet, Hewlett here with another Burn and Learn, and today it's all about robots. Ah, oh, God, this robotic stuff, I just, God, I just get sucked in, and it's just, that's, I, I could just live in a world of robotics. I'd be a very, very happy man, and we may all be living in a world of robotics soon, so certainly from the conversation I've just had. But uh, anyways, before I do that, I should tell you that my Burn and Learns are my bid to stay alive and fit long enough to raise my amazing son and to enjoy the twilight years with my brilliant, beautiful wife, Jane. I hate exercise. It's boring, so I like to learn something while I'm doing it, and then I like to share what I've learned with you in the sweatiest way possible, so that's what I'm doing today. I've sort of failed on the sweaty part today because I, um, yeah. Well, I kind of, I had to, I just sort of dashed directly off the torture device and upstairs into a conversation with my friend uh, Steve Crow from the Robot Report. Uh, Robot Report. God, oh, fantastic stuff. And the learn of my burn today. I, I, um, I really wanted to finish up the 2018 Robot Report annual, as I call it. Um, it's uh, <laughs> it just always it reminds me of the Doctor Who annuals that I used to get. I used to love all. Oh, I used to love them. Every Christmas, you'd get the the new the new annual for Doctor Who, and there'd be stories and sort of background stuff, and just oh, I used to love them. Anyway, so this is like the same thing, only with the robotics industry. So it's just fascinating stuff. And I wanted to finish the report. And then I was so taken with the report that I then dived into their robotreport.com website. And it's just, oh, just a treasure trove of robotic stuff to learn. And some of the things that came up that I was really interested about were, was, um, um, exoskeletons. So exoskeletons were a whole topic in this 2018 report. And, um, obviously that's sort of near and dear to my heart because it's sort of assistive technology, but they're saying that it's moving away from the health industry and more into the in, into the industrial sector because the health industry has a lot of limitations with funding and, and, uh, and legal requirements and all this kind of stuff. Whereas in the uh, industrial world, they can be put to use right away and you can sort of see a return on investment right away. And so that's driving this industry to sort of create bigger and better forms of these things. And it's also such a perfect sort of bridge between robotics and humans because you've got the all the advantage of being human and all the advantages of, of being a robot as well. So you can, you've got the, the, the brains and the ability to get around and make decisions of a human, but um, you have the strength and the dexterity and the uh, uh, well, and the longevity of a, of a robot as well. So people can, can work for longer and they can work harder and it's not going to hurt them as much, which is, I think, kind of a, kind of a, a good combination right now, I'd have to say. Um, Personally, I'd love to get me a little exoskeleton. It might help me out on the old torture device every day. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, the other thing came up that, that was interesting about that was that the whole, this push with um, exoskeletons and robotics in general, this whole sort of mobile robotics approach, um, it's pushing innovation uh, in the miniaturization of, of, uh, you know, of, of motors and also in uh, batteries. Like how do we make batteries more efficient and make them last longer? Um, lithium ion, obviously, what we're using right now seems to be the big is the big technology. They've just discovered they've been bouncing X-rays off, um, off what is it, uh, lithium phosphate, I believe it is, um, off the atoms of these things to see how they work, and they've discovered that they work in a different way than they thought they did. They used to think it was it was just a one directional flow of these uh, uh, of these uh, lithium ions, and um, uh, and it turns out it's actually, there's, there's on the surface of these things, they're moving in the opposite direction, which they weren't expecting. And I don't understand any of it, but it just sounded kind of neat that we had no idea how this thing actually worked, even though we were making batteries out of it. So now we have a better idea. We can model these things better and hopefully make more efficient and longer lasting batteries, which is just kind of neat. Um, there was also a whole thing on uh, robotic skin, like the ability, how our fingertips work with the sensors on the skin, and then the, the sort of ridged section underneath Underneath that is used to, to, to judge pressure. So basically there are little ridges um, under the skin, little mountainous areas that when you press down, obviously the first thing to hit a layer would be the top of the mountains and then the, the little valleys would be the, the bottom and that would tell how much pressure you've applied to something. But it also applies to the other side of the, of the, um, the finger and stuff. So it's just how complex it is in robotics to create the technology to recreate something as simple as a fingertip. Um, but they've done a sort of a basic version of this, which is kind of cool. It's able to sort of touch a raspberry without crushing it to bits. Um, but it still isn't sort of smart enough to know that it's a raspberry and things. So they're, they're, they're working on, on that kind of stuff. So just, uh, just these amazing things that come up in reading about robots. I mean, and now maybe this is also to do with the fact that I've been reading this um, systems thinker thing that I start stepping back and going like, oh, look at how everything's uh, interconnected, how all these different technologies are working together or in sort of parallel but but if, but but all affecting the same sort of uh, like the industrial world right now is all is all being affected by these sort of different robotic technologies and obviously the battery technology and things. Um, 
uh, just, yeah, fascinating stuff. And then the whole point of this was to read up and uh, do cram for my chat with Steve Crow, who is my friend from the Robot Report itself. He's like, like, you know, like a key part of this team that's got this Robot Report out um, on like a weekly basis. And, and is also, he's also the guy, the mastermind behind that amazing robotics conference that I went to in Boston last year. He's doing it one again this year, even bigger, even better, and I'm gonna go even earlier and weasel my way into everything, I think, because I just, oh, it was too short last year. And this year, I wanna, I actually wanna, I wanna, I want it to be like a, a robot holiday for me. So, uh, just fascinating guy to talk to because he's just around this stuff all the time and he could just, he just pulls this information, this amazing sort of robotic insights out of his head while you're chatting because he's just, He's doing this, he's just in this world all the time and putting, you know, connections together. I mean, they just recently broke the story on um, on Rethink going under and, uh, um, you know, how this, this this collaborative robotics thing is is, is really struggling. So uh, just, a yeah, an amazing guy, really fun to talk to. And I'm trying, I said, like, how do I help? How do I become a part of this? I want to do more. I want to do something. Um, so I'm talking about maybe doing some podcasts with him or some videos or just something because I want to be I want to be a part of this. This is so oh, this is just fascinating to me, and it's going to be such a huge part of our lives going forward. I I, I can't wait, and I just want to understand it, and I want to you know I just I, robots are like a dream for me. Ever since I was a kid, it was like robots. It was giant robots. It was sitting in the head of a giant robot and destroying cities. I wouldn't do that now, of course. Now I would build cities, but um. Just that was my, you know, that was my childhood dream. So the idea that this stuff is actually happening now, that I get to talk to some of the people who are involved in it, is just, oh, it's like a dream come true for me. So anyways, uh, that pretty well, I think, sums up my morning. So uh, until we geek again, sweaty or not, here I come, and cheerio!